Alright, let's talk about Sony since we're oh, already right. like Here we go. way into this and we yeah. need to talk about Sony. It's time. So alright. So let's let they started off with Last Guardian, which I was actually really excited about. Yeah. Um we haven't seen it in six years. It's been mm-hmm. in development for nine. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. Um and I thought it was awesome. Absolutely. Of course, everybody was like, oh, he doesn't like run right. It's not smooth. That's I'm how like, That's how the the, I the Shadow, Shadow of the Colossus, Colossus I animation know. is. I know. I know. But it's inevitable that somebody who's never... I mean, how long has it been since Shadow of the Colossus? It's been a really long time. You're right. So uh, people were like, uh, he runs weird. This is weird animation. You know, the animal doesn't fit with the guy. Some of those I can see more than others. I was just really excited because obviously Shadow Claws is my favorite game of all time, mm-hmm. so I'm gonna fucking play this. And of it it, I'm play this. it brings all the enticements that Shadow of the Colossus did. It's like yeah. the 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 way he runs and stuff. It like I, I I said this before. It's like a real compliment to you feeling like a limited human yeah. among this majestic huge creature right. kind of thing. You know, um, and it is it, the. The mechanics of control or like trying to coax the creature into what you're doing, mm-hmm. helping him out, him helping you out, is really interesting. Yeah. And so I'm still incredibly interested in this game. And like the mechanics of them, of him like, okay, creature's gonna catch you and then you're gonna help it out by helping it climb and then you're climbing on its back. Yeah. And there's a lot of that going on. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I really... I loved this, obviously. Yeah. I loved yeah. it. And I think it looks good. I really do think it looks graphically impressive still. Mm-hmm. Like, really. I, I really do. It looks very good. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. I'm still very much interested, obviously. Oh, yeah, I'm absolutely. But... Um, do, you, do you think event, eventually as this game progresses, they'll go through more of a, uh, of a uh, intense, like, combat, like, part of it or do you think it'll be a lot of just like kind of raising this creature kind of thing it's going to be a lot of this i think it's going to be kind of a puzzle platformer okay but with a really interesting mechanic yeah um there'll probably be combat later on Mm -hmm. um once again shadow Colossus got by with 16 enemies and it's not really fantastic enemies. true (laughs) that's yeah (laughs) that's the whole that's a very good point yeah um so i mean if it's not really a stretch of the imagination. And really, they weren't even enemies. It wasn't really combat. The only combat-like thing you were ever doing was shooting the bow. Yeah, that's true. You yeah. weren't swinging your sword at something standing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you, you were, were just stabbing. <laughs> stabbing and climbing. Yeah. yeah. So it was more true. of a puzzle platformer to begin with. And mm-hmm. I think it's not... Yeah, so I don't think it's really a stretch of imagination to just say that this is going to be this. Yeah, And I'm yeah. totally okay with that. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I think I think uh, definitely these games are really an acquired taste. You know, like kind of yeah. a genre of music. You know, it's it really does have its own style, and you you like it or you don't, kind of thing. You know, I think uh, I I don't know. Just to me personally, I think there's a great amount of audience that you don't need a lot gameplay wise to like enjoy these games because it brings such a unique atmosphere to it yeah. that like you you didn't you'd enjoy it like like an album or something you know yeah and i mean yeah. i think the other part of this too is that shadow Colossus was very unique yeah like oh yeah out, like i would never played fine. anything like that and it was an entire game built out of that i still don't think there's and a game like shadow of the no, Colossus. Yeah. no so i mean i'm gonna play whatever this man puts out <laughs> yeah yeah and also that's actually really important that so they showed last guardian said it was coming 2016, and I think right after that they said, oh, and the director of the game is still here, and Ueda actually st- stood up mm-hmm. and waved to the crowd. That's actually very important, because he technically left PlayStation. Oh. Yeah. So, a lot of that was up in the air. Okay. And Sony just kept saying, nope, we're still making it, nope, we're still making it. He said, no, nah, I'm still making it, mm-hmm. we're still doing it, but it's like, we don't know what's happening. Yeah. And the fact that he stood up, he waved, and they said 2016 is actually really important. Yeah. Because it's, I think it solidifies the game a little bit more. 
It, I think I think um, that's such a beautiful thing where th- these games have gotten to a point where you you play them partially for the director. You know? Yeah. Like I mean, you get you get that with like uh, movies or TV series. It's like, oh, this wasn't as good because so and so director or writer left, kind yeah. of thing. But you don't. People don't recognize that as much in video games yet. I would That's say. True. I think they recognize yeah. it with the studio and not necessarily director. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, studio, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I would say directors still have a great impact on it. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think. Uh, this guy, Shadow of the Colossus guy, is the prime example of it, you yeah. know? <laughs> and most, one of the most easily recognizable as well. I yeah. Think. yeah. No, it's it's definitely true. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yay, Last Guardian. I'm You're excited back. to play this. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely am going to need a PS4 before that comes Yeah. <laughs> that was great. Uh, um, so, so then Gorilla came, Gorilla Games came on stage, and I don't, no. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> they came on stage and they said, hey, we have a new IP coming, which is actually kind of cool. Um, and it's called Horizon Zero Dawn, which is the most generic name I've ever heard. <laughs> but, it's a cool-ass concept. Yeah. Fucking robot dinosaurs, bro. Yeah. Um, and not only was the concept really interesting, like, wow, they... You know, they see all these buildings and everything, and they're like, oh, the people who came before us built these buildings. And then they have all these still kind of, like, they have, like, an EMP bow. They have no idea what it does and how it works. Mm -hmm. But they have it. That's a cool concept. Yeah. Um, And then fucking robot dinosaurs are the enemy? This is awesome. it's, It's just so strange to, like, wrap my head around, like, why are robots acting like this? Why are they hunting each other? Right, so that's the interesting thing, is, yeah. is if they get into that, that's really cool. Mm-hmm. Like, the implications of robots reverting to, not even reverting, but like, choosing a dinosaur like, society? They're becoming like primal. Like, why would they do that? Because yeah. they're smart enough not to. Yeah. Like, that's kind of weird. Yeah, definitely. Why would they... So, I there's a lot of questions there that are actually kind of cool. Right. And, like, right. I'm not really expecting a whole lot out of this story. But what I am expecting is I'm expecting cool robot dinosaurs. I mean, I already pretty much have it. The designs and are really, really cool. They're and awesome. creative. Yeah. And I'm expecting good third-person action, which I actually really appreciate. Yeah. I really like Tomb Raider. Mm-hmm. I really like Uncharted. Sometimes... Um, but I, but you know, the third person action games, I like uh-huh. them generally. And this looks very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very much like this. Definitely a unique concept. I don't know. I hope they really dive into the story a lot because you could, you could get really deep with a concept like this, you know? Yeah. But I feel like, you know, they're, they're not focusing big... on that. It's just kind of the flair of robot dinosaurs. Yeah. And actually I'm okay with that because if you go too much into the story, I feel like you risk... Um, convolution and getting like yes. crucified for not telling it right yeah kind because of that's true this is gonna get really convoluted you could definitely yeah. just drop in things here and there without like completely screwing up you know what i mean uh-huh. like you can be like oh they're like this because of this and like she meets a scientist or mm-hmm. whatever who tries to explain some things to her but she doesn't understand like you could do a lot of that pretty easily but um i don't think that's their focus yeah and i don't know if it really should be I'm just looking for cool gameplay out of this because I do like the concept. Uh huh. Yeah, it's true. Like the it's grappling true. hook, like grappling him to the ground that, several times. And that's stuff. another thing. Like combating these, like especially the bigger like creatures, it looks really difficult. Yeah, that's yeah. the other thing too is that it didn't look easy. Yeah. Like she was getting knocked around, and obviously it was it was staged, so she uh-huh. wasn't gonna die. But I mean. It was definitely like, oh damn! Like these things can do damage. It to looked you. much more like really trying to take on a T Rex on your own. Yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so that looked really cool. Um, yeah, uh, just interested to see. I'm also interested to see all the designs. It's gonna be so fucking cool. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, that looks cool. Horizon Zero Dawn is definitely on my list. 
Uh, okay, so Hitman's back. Yay! It looks like a movie. It looks like a movie because it was. <laughs> um, no gameplay, of course. Um, but hey, the PlayStation will receive six unique contracts. I don't know why that's becoming a thing, but mm -hmm. it is. Uh, Street Fighter Five. So yeah, they they basically announced two more they, characters. Yeah, they announced two more characters. That was cool. Um, uh, you know, I thought that was a good idea. Just also, show a little bit more love. Remind people that Street Fighter Five's PlayStation Four yes. exclusive. Kudos to them for yeah. like solidifying that. Yeah. So it was a really good move, and yeah, yeah. Hopefully, it, it does both Sony and Capcom some good. Yeah, in the future. I hope so. Yeah. Um, I'm not really gonna talk about all about dreams very much. I don't know if you want to. Um, uh, maybe a little. Um, what the heck? <laughs> so, Media Molecule did Little Big Planet, the the whole series, mm -hmm. and they, I mean. They did a little bit of Planet, so definitely not, you know, the most traditional developer. They're not going to be making a shooter. This was very weird. Yeah. I did not know what it is. I did not know what the... It's... I I have no idea. You, you, you make <sighs> dreams, basically, and they transition strange and stuff? So, basically, the way I saw it is that... You use the controller and the six axis and the motion control and everything to make basically a painting in 3D. Uh -huh. yeah. And it looks like a painting, so that's a cool part of it, is that the art style is very much like, it looks like a dream. Very cloudy. Yeah. and yeah. Um, But then after that initial drawing, it just goes off on its own. Right. They don't explain the any of that. He like draws a guy, he draws a piano, he draws a lamp. And he's like, cool, so here's this thing. And then... It can go and be in other people's landscapes. And then they show a whole video where elements of previous people's, I'm guessing, creations in this engine go into other people's creations. And then there's like one with spaceships where they're shooting lasers. And then the laser goes into the Polar next bear, one. And, and, and then there's water. a zombies one. Yeah. And then it goes back to the guy at the piano. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think I think this is get gonna be something that's way overhyped with obscurity, and I d yeah. I don't think they can accomplish the uh, what what they're trying to do, having it be like such an incredibly like natural mystical experience or something. I just can't wrap my head around that concept in like hardware, or, like anything like that. Yeah, I'm just I'm still I don't know. I, I'd like to see more. I'd really like to see how this actually works. Yeah. Show me what it does when, like, between... Because their whole thing is, like, you make these creations. And I'm like, okay, cool sort of concept for, like, an, an extra or, mm -hmm. or just a small game or and, whatever. And how does it become but, animated, you know? Well, I think that was part of their thing, is the you animate it. Or you can. Do you? You create. You can create whatever you want. Mm -hmm. The thing that confuses me is they're like, then uh, that moves on to somebody else's creation. And I'm like, does it do that automatically? Or does somebody find your creation and then go, that's cool, and take it? So is it just like a sharing thing? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm confused about is the multiplayer aspect. I yeah. just, I don't know. I have yeah, no idea. Yeah. It's true. Anyway, I mean, if, if, I, if they can pull it off, it'd be something really incredible. It'd be uh, cool but, looking. Yeah. I just don't. I just need to see more of that because I was. It was very obviously strange. very confused. It was very strange. Yeah. Um. Okay. More Destiny DLC is coming. Uh, a new story, I guess. Uh. Right? New, yeah. This one. So this next DLC is another raid boss, uh, and several more missions that lead up to him. That's pretty cool. So yeah, Maybe. um, pretty cool, and it's coming out on September in September. Keep, September keeping Destiny 15th. alive and well. And yeah, and I mean, Destiny's incredibly popular. There's just a lot of people playing it, so yeah. good for them. Yeah, absolutely. Keeping it going. Um, Firewatch. So, Firewatch was not... Yeah. <laughs> Firewatch was not something that was on my radar until this trailer. Um, and I was like, wait, what is this? I don't... I'm, I'm confused, and... 
and then I heard, oh yeah, well it's a, it was a PC exclusive before this, and now it's coming. Its console debut is going to be PlayStation Four. Um, it looks the style is really interesting. The style in combination with the subject. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because it's a like the style is very like Team Fortressy kind of toony. Right, kind of thing. sort of. And yeah. then like the concept is like isolation lurker genre. Yeah, basically you're completely isolated and you're literally a member of the Firewatch who is up in these towers isolated yeah. looking for fires. And that's it. That's the whole game. And at first I was like, oh, I don't know how I feel about that. And then I watched the trailer and I was like, all right. Yeah, that yeah. That was actually really interesting. Yeah, it, yeah, definitely. It's just um, de definitely interesting and unique with the combination, but I don't know what the animation is going to do for this genre. I actually really like this animation a lot. Yeah? Already. Yeah. Um, I just think it's very unique. Mm -hmm. I think it's gorgeous, to be perfectly honest. And I think that there's a lot you can do with just kind of cartoony animation mm -hmm. that kind of you can kind of me mess with not reality but just kind of mess with preconceived notions about fires and that kind of stuff in kind that's of a true. more cartoony aesthetic it's yeah. interesting to me i guess so yeah um so i'd like to see it i'd like mm. i just want to see more and to be yeah. perfectly honest it does look interesting again yeah. i would like to see gameplay yes but i would like to see it's gameplay in literally everything and i'm not yeah. getting I said literally, like, the guy from Parks and Rec. I was not expecting that. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, so the big okay. one... So the big one... Well, okay, I don't know about the big one. This was a huge yeah, one. Yeah, it was the big one. This was a huge one. <laughs> so, so many about halfway through the press conference, they just, do, they just did Firewatch. I'm not really expecting anything surprising, actually surprising. But this was very surprising. It's a, They just dropped it. It's just a random trailer, and it was a, a full remake of Final Fantasy VII. And not only was it, like, a full remake, but the trailer was gorgeous. Yes. It was... The, I think the cool thing about this trailer was it kept you hanging till the very last second because yeah. the shots were really, really obscure. Like, not really any iconic music was showing up right away. It was just, like... Not right away. Shots of a city, kind of, and then right. I'm like... My God, I recognize that slide, and we were like yelling each yeah. to each other across the room, like yeah. Midgar, <laughs> Final <laughs> Fantasy Seven. But like, it, as it continued, they were talking about like, oh, like the they're gonna continue their their returning kind of thing. They're making it sound like almost a sequel kind of right, thing. and that's why yeah. I think a lot of people were originally like, oh my God, they were holding their breath for a second. Is this actually a sequel? Yeah. And then it's like and then a remake. the words remake came up. So, oh, it's, uh, it's oh, still, sorry. I mean, it's really cool, yeah. first of all, that, that I mean, for years people have been saying, you want you want to print money? There's always that stupid joke. You want to print money? Just make Final Fantasy VII Remake, you know, whatever. Um, and they just, they've consistently said year after year, no, we're not doing it. No, we're not doing it. Yeah, yeah. It's such trolls. Of course they are. They're Square Enix. Yeah. They're huge trolls. Um, everyone yeah, yeah you it's know true. It's true. If, if it's something that'll make money like regardless of their principle they'll yeah. eventually cave to yeah. it you know especially when it comes to remakes yeah so, so um anyway but there there is something i do want to say okay. really quickly because like all of us and like i heard this like even about final fantasy 7 like just like Oh, everyone's remaking everything, blah, 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 trying to make more money. But the difference is with this remake here is, like, we've seen, like, HD Last of Us, like, a, a couple years after Last of Us came mm -hmm. out. And, like, a lot of those cases where it's, like, you're, you're remaking HDs of these things that came out really not too long ago. Yeah. But we're talking about Final Fantasy VII here, so... which was, like, it's it's, like... Whether our personal opinions, beyond our personal opinions, it was a pillar of gaming influence for yeah, like incredibly. the population and stuff like that. And it's 20 years later. 
So that's a long thing. time ago. That's you know? the thing. People who are bitching about remakes, they don't need to be bitching about this one. Yeah. yeah I mean, this one, I mean, have you seen Final Fantasy VII? You guys, if anything deserves a fully full graphical update, mm-hmm. it's Final Fantasy VII because it was one of the first 3D animated games. I well, mean, arguably, literally, like, his hand is literally a polygon. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, this one might deserve a remake. It needs it really bad, and, and it deserves it. It's hugely popular. It very much deserves it. It had a huge success, also, even in also that state, one of and the, for many years after, too. For, like, a huge amount of fans, one the first game that, like, reached them emotionally yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, there's so so many aspects. This this thing deserves a remake. Can't and I mean, sound, you know, so I was talking about this with a good friend of mine actually, and this is the one thing that he was worried about, and I get that. Um, worried about taking Final Fantasy VII and saying it's a full remake, and then messing with the engine, the battle system. So uh, yeah. So, that's the one thing that I think is a very legitimate concern of a lot of, a lot of people right now. Mm-hmm. Is that Square has not made a turn-based RPG in a while. Everyone is afraid of normal turn-based. Right. So, Final yeah, Fantasy VII... always got to be a gimmick. Yes. Right. Yeah. Final Fantasy VII, the reason that it was successful, part of the reason that it was successful the way it was... Mm-hmm was because it was turn-based. Yeah. And a lot of the people who want a remake of Final Fantasy VII want a turn-based strategy RPG. Yeah. The one additional thing it had was that uh, warm-up sequence for right. the thing, which I personally think is a great addition. It It's basically turn-based, but keeps you on your toes a lot more. Right. You know? So, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Keep that there, or even just tweak it a little bit. I am afraid of going full action game. Yeah. Oh, it's Final Fantasy XV now. That's bad. Yeah. Because I think you just lose the whole point of doing it. Absolutely. And the whole point of doing it is to update the graphics and, you know, update and make, you know, give voice acting and do whatever. Right. Um, and then keep the system generally intact because people are looking for a turn-based RPG right now. Right. Absolutely. Um, but I would not put it past Square Enix to go, oh, yep, it's a action RPG. It's uh, Final Fantasy XV's... It needed an overhaul. That game is old, you guys. It's like, that's not why people want to remake. And yeah. I think, for good reason, too, because, like I said, Final Fantasy VII is revered in part because of its battle system absolutely yeah. just like six is so yeah. what are you going to go back and remake six as well and make it a like a an action rpg why would you do that no absolutely not so they they did that was one of them uh a, a lot of the uh older final fantasies did get remakes for game boy yeah they were they were held intact yeah so yeah there's that uh, I don't know. I, I, I have confidence that they'll keep the battle system intact just because I, I think they really do recognize that reverence and they've just held out so long to even try to do yeah. this. It's yeah. like when they're finally doing it, I, th- I, th- I think they'll do it, right? I hope so. That fear is very understandable with current Square Enix, though. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. And yeah. I just hope that they don't fall into that. I don't think that they will, but you never know. Yeah, but anyway, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll hope for the best. And we'll hope for the best for sure. Th- I, this, I do think this announcement was a miracle. Yeah, no, and it's Hands very down. cool. And it was yeah. a very cool trailer. They waited until the very end to you know kind of play the iconic music and get everybody really hyped for it. It was a very Absolutely. cool trailer. It was awesome. And you know what? You know what? I think PS4 is a great time for it. You yeah. know, with the, with the graphic capabilities mm-hmm. yeah. to like bring back all those like memories into like s- such per- perfect gra- graphical rendition yeah. it's it's gonna be amazing yeah um and then that thing <laughs> so that was the perfect segue of all time what yeah what i think it's that gonna be, below this i just love that i love that segue so much 
Yeah, I just think it's going to be amazing. Oh, and then that thing. <laughs> so immediately going from, this can tell you how much Final Fantasy has fallen in our opinions, goes from Final Fantasy VII Remake to the world of Final Fantasy, which is just like a chibi blob. It's it's a chibi collection piece of shit. whatnot. Who, I don't even know. I, no one cares. I, basically, this is another chibi game, mobile game, you that's going to come out and do really well in Japan. You look at... All the expected titles, the the, the the titles from Square Enix that everyone really wants, and they're like, oh no, it takes time, it takes time. My ass, it takes time when they're filling their time with garbage like this. It's everywhere. Uh, this thing, mobile stuff. Uh, yay, a call Kingdom rant. Hearts fillers. Uh, <laughs> yay, You don't ranting. need it. We, You'll make a lot more money by getting the 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 amazing titles out super fast, and then just make more amazing titles. <laughs> Holy frick! So <laughs> that Paul rant was fantastic. I'm by the sorry. Way. I'm uh, sorry. No, no, it's totally fine. I 100% <laughs> agree with you, dude. I absolutely do. Uh -huh. Going immediately from <laughs> it's just so funny to me because going immediately from like oh my god a Final Fantasy VII remake. Oh my god, no. <laughs> it's like, little Chibi Care is like, ah, uh, yay, we're running around in Final Fantasy. In the conference, I think this was first. I'm, I'm pretty sure this yeah, was Yeah, you might be right. Fantasy okay, you it. might be right. Still, why are you here? <laughs> the world, yeah. So anyway, I guess this is PS4 and PS Vita. I don't even know what it is. I mean, there's not even any gameplay. It was literally a really bad CGI trailer, and they were like, Oh, it's coming in 2016. Okay, moving on. It's I was just like, literally right. the most goofy ass cameo basket ever. Yeah, yeah basically. So I'm not. Uh, yeah, I'm not super. No. Not super looking no. forward to it. Not super looking forward to it. Okay, so we. Uh, so we come to. Uh, we come to something sort of weird to me. Uh, Shenmue was a very oddly influential game when it first came out um it had a lot of it did a lot of different things when it first came out basically mm -hmm. it took forever it was in development for i don't even know how long and when it came out the graphics blew people away mm -hmm. it blew people's minds and if you look back at it now it's it's pretty surprising for when it came out mm -hmm. shenmue one and two yeah um and apparently the story was pretty good and it's kind of a detective story, Sen Japan, and just kind of interesting. And I don't know that much about it. I've never played them, admittedly. Um, and so Shenmue 1 and 2 came out, and they kind of had a, like a cult following. And basically, it it influenced a lot of what I would call like cinematic games that came after it. Okay. Um, and they made Shenmue 2, and apparently it ended on Cliffhanger. And then they were like, See you later, and then they left. And that kind of sucks. Mm -hmm. um, so, huh. so that's been a fan favorite. Basically, being asked for by a very cult core audience. Yeah. Right. Like nobody else even knows about Shenmue. Yeah. Partly. I, right. I I think I saw it once somewhere yeah. on YouTube. That's that's exactly. all I know. Right. So most people don't even know. But Sony comes out and they goes and they go, you know, it's awesome. The developer is going to be launching a Kickstarter campaign. We're not involved in any way, shape, or form, but we'd like to help him kickstart it. And they did, and the game was, I mean, it was done. It was two million dollar goal. It is like twelve hours, not it even. It was reached right away. I mean, literally right away. Yeah. Um. And that's really cool. And then Sony comes out later and goes, oh, it's so great that everybody was this excited about it. I guess we'll help with the development now. Ooh. Little, you're a little shady. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't notice that. That's, that's a little shady. Uh, I was kind of like, um, I don't think I want you to ever do that again. But... Now the precedent is set. Mm -hmm. And I am really curious next year if that's going to happen again. 
or whether there's going to be enough they, backlash they test that it the doesn't. waters of something. So that's what bothers me about it. They're like, oh, maybe we'll just test the waters. Uh-huh. Oh, it's just Kickstarter. You guys make the game. Oh, super popular. We can make a shit ton of money, and you've already given two million dollars. Well, we'll take that. Excuse me, off of Kickstarter. We'll fund the rest of the game. We'll give you all your your uh, rewards and everything. And then we'll also get your money when we release the game. Mm. I... You have money. <laughs> Kickstart yeah. it yourself. Yeah. And and that's what I'm a little like. I just I don't I don't know how I feel about that. A mm-hmm. lot of Japanese developers, the guy who made Castlevania, the guy who made Mega Man, didn't wasn't Mighty Number no. Nine Kickstarted. Yeah. Um, all these guys are coming out of the woodworks and they're like, we want to make spiritual successors. Yeah. And everybody funds them, and it's a tiny little indie studio, and the next thing you know, it's funded enough, and they can be on PS4 and Xbox. Uh-huh. But Sony and Microsoft are going, okay, you want to be on PS4 and Xbox? Sure. But Sony's not the one behind it. Mm-hmm. They're not the one inviting the guy on stage for a traditionally PlayStation-exclusive series. Mm-hmm. Like, that's, that's the weird part to me, is they invite him on stage, he starts the Kickstarter, they make all this money, and then Sony's like, oh, great. Now we're involved. Yeah. You know, that's... Uh, yeah. Big name company. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, I don't really want to see that happen again. I think mm-hmm. it's great. People are really excited about uh, are excited about Shenmue 3. That, that's, that's the one thing I think we should recognize is just, like, the magnificence of Kickstarter in this age is, like, the, the voices of fans can really be, like, heard and we get the op we get the opportunity to support these things where otherwise like sony or nintendo or someone would just pass off without a wink if kickstarter wasn't there but yeah. like we get yeah. the option to choose what we want and recognize things we believe that are fantastic works works of art that like maybe not a mass population normally does, and this this is a great example for this because this right. is another title that has laid dormant for so long, and I, I think it's just great that like we're gonna be able to the the fans are gonna be able to get that you know they got okay. that opportunity you know That's but true. I do agree that like the the part the part about Sony and what they're doing yeah. is <clears throat> is sketch you know I it just seems sketchy to me because. Yeah. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that, Mm -hmm. truthfully. And really, that's the thing, is maybe Sony really didn't know how much people, how many, how much people were willing to give for Shenmue. Yeah, I don't think so. And maybe they were using that to test the waters, but I don't think so. I think they knew. You gotta believe their market research is good enough to Uh go, oh yeah, no, if we made Shenmue 3, it would make a lot of money still. Mm -hmm. There would still be a core audience there. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, they do that all the time. Make budgets for stuff like that. Oh, yeah. According to demographics? Hell yeah. That's, yeah, the, yeah, that's yeah. a whole part of their business. Yeah, yeah. So, we, you really didn't look at the Shenmue community? You really couldn't run a poll, ask people what they thought, mm-hmm. bring the developer into the E3 conference and say, what do you guys think about Shenmue 3? Like, instead of doing a Kickstarter? You really, you really didn't think that... I don't know. You really didn't think that many people were that excited about it. I, that's the thing where I'm like, no, you knew. Yeah. You knew, and it was like, oh, do the Kickstarter. Oh, great, $2 million. You just did all our PR. <sighs> Thanks. And then they go make the game. Yeah. I'm a little like, eh. Yeah. Maybe yeah, it I wouldn't think. have happened without the Kickstarter being fully funded. But you announce that on the E3 stage with a game like Shenmue, it's going to be funded. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. That's all. <laughs> so I don't know. Um... Yeah, I just kind of hope that doesn't happen again. Congrats for Shenmue, though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, uh, Devolver Digital came out. They announced four games. Um, it's all, they were all, like, um, 2D brawlers. Mm. Which was really funny. Actually, one of them was a stealth game, but... They were basically all 2D, 2D games. Um, but Devolver Digital is really cool, and they... I like their partnership with PS3. Um, mm-hmm. find a lot of really good indiv- indie developers with unique styles and bring them to the console, so that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, a couple things that 
we're kind of released and we'll just put these kind of together. So not only Assassin's Creed Syndicate DLC is exclusive to PS4, some, some missions are exclusive, then they also somehow nabbed Call of Duty uh, content. I still don't know how. Then they nab Disney Infinity content. Star Wars Disney Infinity. Star Wars Disney Infinity content. Then they had a trailer of Battlefront that was like, ooh, running on PS4. Like they were showing it off Battlefront on it was PS4. Like, it, like both Assassin's Creed and the Battlefront, like between the conferences were like, just like, ooh, the other side kind of thing. Right. So yeah. this is the amazing thing to me. Destiny DLC showing off uh-huh. PS4. So, partnership with Activision intact. Yeah. All the EA stuff, partnership with EA intact. Mm-hmm. Star Wars, Disney, partnership with EA and Disney, and and Star Wars, LucasArts now, well, LucasFilms, all, all those partnerships are intact. Ubisoft is intact, exclusive missions on PS4. Damn, Sony. Yeah, yeah, they're... He, they literally have everyone. They're, they're getting the... The friendly crew in. <laughs> like, you have purchased I mean, with every big company now. That's crazy. It's, re- it's really smart. It's, uh, I don't yeah. know what else to say. Yeah. Like, they're, they're, they're striking the good deal. Yeah. Right um, so, uh, I think that was all I really wanted to say about the DLC thing. Like, all, all those little tidbits. Yeah, because there was just a lot of, uh, DLC stuff. Uh-huh. Um, so, yeah, all that DLC stuff, and then, of course, we got Battlefront Co-op, which looked really cool. This was the one with the two guys who were running through the, uh... Oh, right. The yeah, course. there was, like, the co-op right. missions. Yeah. That was really cool. It was yeah. a desert, so it was a different environment, and once again, the graphics are absolutely amazing. So, yeah. more Battlefront stuff. That absolutely. was really cool. And then I think the last thing that we really want to talk about... Well, well we should talk about Uncharted 4, maybe, first. Yeah. Let's talk about Uncharted 4. So Uncharted 4 was actually at the very end. Um, it just kind of showed up, and it was kind of supposed to be a mic drop. Kind of worked. Um, except, uh, the, except for the, the fact that froze. the game froze. Um, and they couldn't control the character. So I think they just went to footage. Which was fine. Um, it shows that Tony, or that companies like this are still doing, trying to do live stage demos. Yeah, it, that, um, that was scary and would have yeah. sucked hard. Like. So that, that that happens a lot. I mean, it happens a lot with games like this. Oh, yeah. Um, usually happens once a year. This time it was Uncharted 4. So it froze. Uh, they were like, okay, just run the footage. <laughs> um, and once again, it's Uncharted. So it looks cinematic and pretty much gorgeous. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean that, it's, that giant, uh, that giant uh, car chase with the tank. It was getting really funny <laughs> that they, they went through like what, like fifteen alleys, and like yeah. the tank was somehow still in front of right. them the whole yeah. time. And even there, like, oh come on, this is stupid. <laughs> I mean, I like I've I've always really liked Uncharted because it is like playing an action game or an action movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, and this was very much like playing an action movie. Yeah, so it was very exciting. Incredibly thrilling, and you know, controls obviously look good, and everything's very cinematic, and so I'm excited to see it. And yeah. obviously, there's something about his brother that's going on here, um, because they keep showing parts of that. So, mm-hmm. uh, some interesting story mechan or interesting uh, story tidbits being dropped there. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, Uncharted Four. I mean, I'm generally excited. I liked the first three Uncharted. I had problems with some of them, but mm-hmm. I mean, they were they were great games as far yeah. as I could tell. Yeah. So, um, okay, the la- okay. So the last thing we wanted to talk about, and really, this was previous in the conference, but we were kind of saving it to last. This is this is the thing I'm most excited <laughs> for. So, what do you think? Yeah, I think generally, I think this is the thing I was most excited for, and it's kind of sad why I'm most excited for it. But anyway, we'll get to that. Uh, no Man's Sky first showed up at Sony press conference two years ago? I thought it was last year. No, it might have been last year. You might be right. Um, and No Man's Sky is one of those games when I first heard about it, I went, that's impossible. It's absolutely impossible. I was like, no, there's no way. And then they kept showing gameplay, and I was like, well, fuck. 
okay, if that's real, that's really cool, but how? How is that real? And then it was this, I think this stage demo that really solidified, like, oh, okay, yeah, they're actually doing that. So not only he started off with, he started off in the ship, and he's shooting down people, he's doing whatever. He's, a, he's kind of watching a war go down. Right, he's kind of watching a war, he's shooting down a couple ships here and there, he's helping out one, one side of the war, mm -hmm. essentially. And, I mean, it's not like the ship controls look amazing, um, but, you know, he's just showing it off a little bit, and he's like, okay, so I'm going to pause, zoom out of the planet here, so this is the planet I'm on. And I just, want to, I just want you to keep in mind, this is this is obviously the mind-blowing part of this. He goes, I just want you to keep in mind that every thing of light you see is a solar system. Or a sun. With a collection of planets. With a collection of planets. And he zooms out. And zooms out. And zooms out. And zooms out. Holding it down. Having it go so fast that it's like, is He's this revealed possible? that he has access to a whole galaxy. Yeah. I mean, it was insane to me, too, because this was very much... He came on stage, and actually, during the PC demo that he did later for the PC one, uh, he came out on stage, and he made a joke about, wow, our marketing team's going crazy, because they were saying stuff about, it's won so many awards, and he's like, oh, game isn't even out yet. He seems so genuine. Every time I see this guy, he's mm -hmm. so genuine. He just came out on the PS4 stage, and he goes, so I don't know how this is going to go. Because, I mean, it went great in rehearsal a couple times we did it, but literally you are watching a demo of this game, so we'll see. Yeah. And, and just immediately, I go, okay, I, I, I like this a lot more. Mm -hmm. Because it really did seem like that. Not yeah, he's out went there with well. a controller, just, it's right. not like perfect kind of thing. Right. You know? So he zooms out, and there's, you know, a bajillion fucking planets. And he just picks one, and he goes, okay, so I'm going to pick a random planet. And he's like... See so how it goes. This, this, you know, this one one in rehearsal, but we'll see. And he zooms in on the planet, and he flies forward, and he goes, "I'm going to do a scan." And he goes, "So there, you can see a beacon." And he goes, "I've set it up so that there's a beacon always there." And he lands, and the first thing he says is, oh, "Just my luck that there would be no creatures <laughs> at all, right?" Yeah. He's like, "Well, okay," but he's like, "But the cool thing about No Man's Sky is everything's destructible," and he starts shooting. Like a random, like, cliff right. formation kind of thing. It destroys a cliff, and then the Sentinels come, which was really cool, because yeah. they, like, show up, and they're, like, the robot protectors of the galaxy. Right, Essentially, right. that are on every single planet. Yeah. And they kind of add a combat element into it. Um, and then it just... It's just amazing to me, because he goes into a river, and he's like, oh, there's some fish? Okay, I'll scan that fish. Okay, put that in there. <laughs> and then he sees another animal, and he scans it, and he sees another animal, and he scans it, and then he has a little, like, robot sentinel come up, and he's like, get the fuck out of here, and he shoots it away, <laughs> right? Like, it felt like he was playing it. Yeah, absolutely. Like, what I would do. I would be like, oh, okay, this is a weird planet, there's, like, nothing here, I'll just scan what animals I have, and upload them onto the beacon, and, mm -hmm. and then, when he did that, he was like, oh, I guess my time's up. It, okay, <laughs> sure, why not? Just leave, then. Yeah. I, I, it, it, it still blew my mind. And yeah. the, the complaint for a lot of people is, well, what do you do? And I'm like, I don't... Anything you want! I literally, anything you want, I Andrew. literally don't fucking care what I do. Yeah. Like, I, I, I appreciate that you don't like Minecraft. I appreciate that people out there don't like Minecraft. I don't care. I love Minecraft. Yes, I got bored of it at some point. I will absolutely agree with that. Mm -hmm. Dude, it, I don't care. This is sci-fi fucking Minecraft. I'm gonna play it. This, this, like, literally, this literally shoots, like, solar systems beyond any exploration game. Yeah. And that's the thing, you know, like, it's it could be very possible that no one explores this entire game. And that is a thrilling thing because... Every single person's adventure on this game will be completely right. different. And the objective is to get to the center of the universe. Uh, that's your objective. I fucking love that. Yeah. Well, and then he goes, oh, and you know, a lot of these planets may never be touched by human eyes. We don't know. Mm -hmm. Right? Because there's a shit ton of them. Yeah. I think the last number he said was 18 quintillion or something fucking ridiculous. Like... He's like, oh yeah, the, the, he writes it out on a fucking whiteboard, and they're like, 
how many how long would it take for humans to get that? He's like, oh, well, right now with the galaxy map that we have right now, uh, you wouldn't. Literally half these planets will never be seen by human eyes because it would take like five hundred years. Oh my gosh. For one, for each person to spend one second on a planet and go to the next one, like it would take five hundred years. Oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> so he's it's like, so fantastic. So, so not only does he say that, and then he just goes, so, so yeah, so that's so that's cool. Like, it just seems so like that's like a, a they had a cool idea for a game, and they went, I think somebody's gonna like this, and so they made. That's the kind of shit that I want to support. If you want to know the truth, absolutely. Like this, some guys were curious and were like, "I don't know. I kind of want to make a game where you just explore planets because I like Minecraft and I like whatever." But I want to explore planets and I like sci-fi. And how about we just do it procedurally generated? Yes, yes, one hundred percent. Can we do that? Uh-huh. The fact, the other fact too, is he's playing live on stage in a demo. He pulls up from a planet. He zooms all the way fucking out to the center of the galaxy or wherever it is. He picks a random planet. He goes to it. Mm-hmm. It warps. He he drives, not drives, he flies up to the planet, scans it, goes onto the planet, fights a bunch of shit, uploads stuff to the beacon, and there is no loading. Not once. Yeah. I mean, we even saw that in the first uh, yeah. demo last yeah. year. Is like he moved from one planet to another. Right. Saw some ships go by, et cetera, et cetera. It's crazy. It's so cool. This is the the craziest thing I have ever seen ever. Like I, I, I just that's not an exaggeration. It I've never seen anything like this. <laughs> like it's, I, it's fantastic. I like you know people are like don't get too hyped because it could not be like this. And I'm like you, you know what? Yes, you're right. It could not be like this. It could release and it could the the gameplay could be totally boring and I could not. But I have to be excited. For he's something like he's this. backing it up a lot more than any anyone I else out totally there. I totally agree with you. Yeah. Like not only it was he like, oh, uh, the game can do this; it'll have this many planets. People were like, that's never gonna happen. He goes, all right, well, give me a month and I can show you a demo of it. And then he does. Yeah. And then they do, and then everybody's like, oh, well, that's cool. I guess <laughs> I guess I wasn't expecting that. And it happens every time. Where people are like, no, you won't be able to do it. No, it won't be that good. What do you do? Do you just do nothing? And he's like, well, there's space battles. You do this, you do that, you do this. You, you can, you can like, literally do everything. You know, you can you can choose to explore, which probably a lot of people will do. You can choose to just, just, just like plant yourself on a planet and start making a civilization kind of thing. Right. You can trade and then have a war, fight, anything. Right. You know? I, I just... I really really want to see this yeah. and i really really this is something that i think deserves a little bit of excitement and deserves some a expectation lot. a lot yeah. so if they live up to that expectation i'm really glad even if they don't i still want to play it i don't really care either way this is something that i want to play yeah absolutely. and i think they deserve that because he i just love the way he got on stage and just fucking played I'm just going to show you the game. Yeah. Can we start doing that? Yeah. Is that a Seriously. thing that can start happening? <laughs> yeah, no. The, the no, thing... we're moving away from that, yeah. Andrew. No, I know. <laughs> the, actually, the thing that kind of upset me, though, he got three minutes. He yeah. was like, oh, well, I have three minutes. Fucking really? Yeah. Like, is that... I don't know. Maybe it was that he didn't want to go that far because he doesn't want to show that much. I don't no, know. I mean, not even last year was this like a huge discussion title either. Yeah. And then they've kept it kind of like, like, it's one of their spotlights, but not nearly their big spotlight yeah. kind of thing, you know? Um, but I love this idea. I think it, it's, it's really fantastic. cool. And I am absolutely excited for it. Yeah. Um, so. And if this really lives up to the expectation, this will be the greatest streaming game ever. Yeah, it's very true. <laughs> well, can you imagine with that many planets, it depends on how many players start, but they're going to all start at the edge of the galaxy, which is fucking enormous, right? Like, if you think yeah, about it, like yeah. the ring, edge of the galaxy, hopefully, good lord. Hopefully they start all in different, like, parts of the edge. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, no, of course, it. of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but I'm just saying, everybody starts on different parts. Yeah, yeah. How long is it actually going to take for you to get to another human? That's actually a really cool thought. Well, 
I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping you'll be able to warp to your friends. See, I don't know if I want them to do that though. At because least have the, the option. Okay, maybe. Yeah. It, it, if the whole point is to get to the center of the galaxy, and like have to upgrade things and like get stronger, get better ships, get an army oh. to fight through to the center of the galaxy, because that's kind of what it sounds like. Mm. I don't know if I would want them. To do that, because your friend gets closer to the center of the galaxy, and you're like, oh, cool, I'll just upgrade my ship and then go to you. I don't know if I really want Maybe, that. what about, uh, what about, like, warping allowed only to players below your distance? Like, at a farther distance. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Hmm? Then you have to go all the way back. But, at the same time, I th think, and once again, we don't know, but I think you can warp to planets you've already been to. Yeah, and you can jump it, jump past a lot of planets too. Apparently, yeah, yeah. So. No, I mean you can just pass by planets. Yeah, you don't have to explore them. You can just keep going. Yeah, I mean that's the thing that's so cool about it. Yeah, uh, I just want to get to the center of the universe. You can literally just start doing that, mm -hmm. or you can explore. Yeah, you can build whatever yeah. whatever you want to do. Absolutely. This looks awesome. It does. I'm it, fucking excited. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. Yes, it's so cool. Yes. Anyway, that that was the most exciting thing to me still after how, I don't know how long. Uh, this is I've known about this. This is still the most exciting thing to me. This um, this I think is what's going to convince me to get a PS4 before Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, if it comes out before Kingdom Hearts, yes. Yeah. I will agree with that. So, anyway, I hope we see a little bit more of it and I want to see a few more details about like ship battles mm -hmm. and um combat on the ground and the crafting system that's the main thing yeah yeah making that's stuff true. making true. stuff we haven't seen yet i want right. to see that for mm -hmm. sure so yeah definitely anyway this has been a really good and lengthy discussion on e3 um yeah that's e3 for you yeah you it, can't, it was you can't just talk about it for five minutes. You gotta no. talk about it for hours. That's <laughs> the only much. way it works. Yeah. Um, so, what I want to hear from you guys is what you think about not only just No Man's Sky, but literally everything. What, uh, of what, E3. what sparked your interest the most in this whole conference? Right. What was the most exciting thing to you? Yeah, yeah. Let us um, know. Tell us why. It's by the way, we will, we will be talking about Kingdom Hearts 3. Or oh yeah, we're we, leaving that for another video. Yeah, because we we really love that, so it's gonna right. get its own little thingy. Yes. <laughs> so we're gonna talk a little bit about that in another video. Yeah. And um, keep so keep an eye out for that, uh, and tell us what you guys are most excited about, and what you thought was the coolest part of the show, yeah. and if you think we're wrong or right or whatever about anything. Yeah. Just just start let a us conversation. Know your opinions. Yeah. <laughs> start a conversation on. Facebook.com slash the fanvoice podcast. YouTube.com slash the fanvoice podcast. Google.com slash plus the fanvoice podcast. Um, Twitter at fanvoice podcast. Our email fan is fanvoice.com. And of course, the fanvoice.com where you can find news, reviews, articles, and downloads of our podcasts and all, all those wonderful things Woo! we got out there for you. All right. Check I hope out. you guys enjoyed our what is probably going to be several podcasts. We recorded this in one sitting. It's probably going to be like three podcasts. I'm ready to so. die. <laughs> yeah, Paul's going to go to bed. Uh, I'm going to go to bed. And uh, we're... I'm going to go dream about No Man's Sky, probably. So, this is going to be fun. those galaxies. Hell yes. Sky is not the limit. <laughs> uh, this is a man's sky. It is Andrew's sky. Yes. All right, I'm going to go to bed. Okay. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll see you guys later. Okay. See you later, <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.